In the previous video, we added dark mode. And the button sitting right next to the team selector is the language selector. And that's the topic of today's video, implementing localization in a Tanstack start application. As usual, let me show that through git commits. We're gonna see first how to set up the library, then how to handle server-side rendering, then we can split the localization files and add TypeScript support. But let's begin from the library. I'm not implementing everything by myself, right? And this is probably one of the most popular library in the JavaScript ecosystem. So I18 next with the React wrapper and also the language detector. We're gonna see that in a second. And right after installing these three packages, the first thing you're probably gonna do is to create the actual configuration file. So we're here, I set it inside source lib i18n.ts. And this is for the very first example, my localization strings. So in English and another language that unsurprisingly I picked Italian. So let's have a look at the very minimal configuration you need to make it work. And then you can expand on all the other million features this library has. But first of all, let's make sure to init the React utility functions as the library is really JavaScript framework agnostic. If you're using on React or any other framework, there's usually this extra step to do. And here you can also notice that I've got this language detector. What language detector does is basically you don't have to worry about detecting the language, storing it manually on the cookie, on localhost, on anywhere you want. This library takes care of that. But in this case, since Tanstack Start has server-side rendering, you might want to use the cookie. And the reason is as simple as your server has to know the language when it first rendered. And the most common way of doing that is through a cookie. But the good news is that through language detector, you almost don't have to do anything else. The only thing you have to specifically take care of is to read the cookie during server-side rendering. I think there's already a hint here. The language detector works on the browser, but if you have server-side rendering, you need this tiny extra step. But it is as simple as reading the cookie and setting the language. And where do I do that? And the answer is inside our before load of our root component. I'm also making sure that the user is authenticated. And here I just added also this function. I could promise.all, but this is really fast anyway. The relevant thing here is that if I comment this line, so we're not setting up manually during server-side rendering, and I go on the browser, this is what happens. If I'm on the default language that is English, I can refer to page and that's fine, other than this button enabling, but the language is perfectly fine. But if I go on any other language that is not the default language and I refer to the page, I get an hydration error. And the reason is that the server didn't know the language, so it fall back on English. It rendered the page in English, but then as soon as the page hits the browser, the language detector kicks in and says, hey, there's Italian selected, so I should change the language. You see that text flickering and Adoration error and everything explodes. So this is why you must do uh, something like that. So make sure that the server knows the language. And here's a nice trick. We're on Tanstack start. We can use isomorphic function that runs differently on the server and on the client. This import is from Tanstack React start. But here, as you can see, there's only dot server. I want to set the SSR language only the first time when this runs on the server. So this is the function that gets executed on the server. And this is actually the function that gets executed on the client. That is literally nothing. That's the entire goal of this thing. You can have different behaviors if you want, or you can have no behavior at all, either on the server or on the client. That's a nice trick, but this doesn't cover all possible scenarios. Let me go back on the browser and you can already see it here. The title of the browser is in English. So let's have a look in the code why the title is not changing. This is the submit page and these are the changes I did to make it happen. I imported use translation from React I8 in Next and I used the hook. So all text have been replaced by the localization key and that's exactly what you would expect. But in the title, the title comes from the head function. This, well, first of all, it's not localized at all, but this runs only once on the server. First of all, I cannot use the use translation hook as this is not a React component or a hook. But also this runs just once on the server. 
So I cannot simply replace this as we do with the use translation hook. So what can I do? Well, before jumping in on the SSR title part, what do we have left? Well, first of all, in the root, I also added the language here to make sure that the HTML tag is compliant and in sync with the language we selected. Then I had to import on router to make sure that each router instance actually has the localization logic and everything works by itself with the language detector we talked about earlier. And the very last thing is the language toggle. I just asked Copilot to please vibe code me a simple language toggle, but really the only thing that matters is that there's a button calling change language that could be either English or Italian. But if you're still here watching, you might be interested into the SSR title fix. And that's not really difficult. The idea is that first of all, submit has to take localization somehow, right? And here I can import the localization object and get access to the translation function. With that, I can pass the localization key, which is replaced with the actual value. But this doesn't solve the problem of head not rerunning. So what can we do? In the root, I added an extra function that is a use effort actually, that listens to language changes, and every time a language change, the router gets invalidated. Which means that if the language changes, the router executes again, so that this function returns the proper string of the new selected language. So if I now go on the browser, you see the title is in Italian, I change to English, and the title goes back in English. And this works perfectly fine. But in the initial example, you saw that all the localization keys were here inside this file. This is not really ideal, so the common approach everyone uses and works perfectly fine on Tansa Start is to get rid of the localizations here and move them somewhere else. For example, some separate JSON files in another folder. Now, if you have the localization coming from somewhere else, from another server, you cannot do what I'm gonna show you with TaskGrid. But if you have the luxury of having the JSON files or all the keys here in the same repository, let me go on the next commit and show you a nice trick. I check out this one, so now I'm on the head of my main. And by simply adding this file, there's really nothing else. You can configure to have even more features, but again, there's a minimal, perfectly working setup. I can extend the interface of the library and say that this is the default namespace that is exactly the one that I defined here, translation that also the default, you can have more than one. And also the resources are type of translation, with translation being exactly that JSON file with all my localization key. And what you can do with that? Well, if I go on submit here and I input a wrong value, you're gonna see TaskGrid complaining, hey, this is not an assignable parameter. This string doesn't exist. And obviously if you go with, the, with an empty string, you have autocomplete with all the possible values. You can see here the prefix with the namespace in case you have more than one, or simply all the strings here being suggested and auto-completed for you. This makes localization way less painful than it could be. With that said, the code is as usual on a GitHub repository and the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what other features you would like to see me showcasing on a Tansa Start application. Just write a comment here. And since you're writing a comment, you're reading the description, also don't forget to click the subscribe button. And with that said, see you in the next video. Bye.